I got some PCBs in the mail today. Um, I ordered them from JLC PCB. Um, anyway, it's been a long time coming. I don't know how many of you saw my last video where I was working on this flash adapter for my, uh, I don't even know where the heck it is. Here it is. For my mini cart reader here. I don't think this has an SD card in it, but it doesn't matter. Um, I made this, it's basically a smaller SANI cart reader. Uh, my original intention was to have this modular so you can swap out the um, the board here. So instead of having the Game Boy adapter, you could plug in like, um, I don't know, Super Nintendo board or Super Famicom, whatever you want to call it, uh, Nintendo 64, you know, whatever. I, of course, only ever ended up designing the Game Boy board, and then I just kind of left it at that because... That was really the only board I wanted. I had no motivation to finish. Uh, but then eventually I ended up working on the flash adapter board for um, for this thing here, this yellow thing that plugs into the Super Famicom slot on the original reader here, which is what this is here. I think I just accidentally messed up the uh, flash in progress, but whatever, that's fine. Um, I made this because I mean, this is great, but this whole reader is kind of clunky to use, uh, especially compared to the one that I made that's much smaller. Uh, this just pops on here, and then you slip the uh, the adapter on here. But for those that saw the original video, you know this doesn't work. Uh, anyway, I have finally figured out the issue, I believe. And... Uh, PCBs are in this box, so we'll try that out. But just just to start off, I do want to show that I do have a flash chip in this board. It is detected. It's an MBM 29FO33C. If that's flash and too much, you can't read it. It's in there. I'm not going to remove it because it's kind of a pain in the ass to get these TSOP40 chips lined up. So just going to set this aside, use it later, and we'll get my other one. Now, need to remove the adapter that's on it. Should have done ahead of time. Bear with me. Okay. All right, so I have a whole nother one that I built. Ta-da. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, my egregious error could not be fixed just by uh, bodge wires on the PCB. I had to design a whole new PCB for this. Thankfully, it was a relatively easy redesign, and uh, PCB fab went relatively quick. No real big deal there. Um, I did find out my error, and unfortunately, it was just just bad enough that yeah, I couldn't fix it just by just running some wires. There were two errors initially. The first one was that I had accidentally run two different traces um, connected up A11 to A1, whereas A1 should have been to A1 and A11 should have been to A11. They should have been separate, but I just had all, I had A11 and A1 going to A1 and A11 just disconnected entirely. So that's what these two bodge wires are for, but nothing else I could, you know, I, I kept trying, you know, I, I was testing with the multimeter, trying to figure out why the, um, why nothing seemed to be working. I was hoping to salvage these switches, but I have a feeling this is not going to come out as easily as I want. But anyway, yeah, I kept testing with the multimeter, uh, going over, pouring over the circuit schematic, and, you know, e everything seemed to make, you know, everything seemed to check out. I couldn't figure out what exactly the issue was uh, until finally it hit me. I actually ended up, like I said, I had intended this thing to be modular. I built another one of the modules and um, started testing things out and figured I got the entire um, layout mirrored by accident. So the schematic was right. I just had things connected completely backwards. So it wasn't 
I can't remember exactly what it was. I think like the pins that were on the left were on the right and vice versa or something, something dumb, but it was also upside down so that everything still looked right. So that the left column was on the right and yeah, it was, it was a mess. Anyway, that's not an over with and I got new PCBs. Let's use... Let's use blue, because blue on red is cool. This is a whole lot of soldering. Not much to be done about that. I uh, also moved the switch position to down here. I feel like that made more sense. Um, I think that's... Oh no, it'll be fine. Okay. These will go in here. And I have plenty of these switches, they're super cheap. It's just, there's no point in not salvaging them because that board is never gonna work. I think all three of the adapters, cause there's three sets of, three sets of pins there. I think all three of them got messed up and I fixed all three of them, at least on, I think I did. I can't really test out the other two sets though. I do have the physical adapters and such. I just don't have any chips to test it with. But if the MBM20 or yeah, if the MBM29FO33C chip goes well, then I'll have to assume the other ones went well as well. As well. And I will go ahead and uh, finally upload this to a GitHub repository. I never did that before because I, I felt kind of weird uploading things that I'd never actually tested. And yeah. But if all goes well, I'll upload it now. And those that want to make one of these can do so. And, uh, well, hopefully it works. I guess it's time to stop yammering on and just get it assembled to test out. Okay, so this goes on this side. Like that. And these chip adapters are the same, same one the Sani uses. There's links and stuff on uh, on the GitHub for that shit. That's not what I wanted to happen. It'll be fine. Just bear with me. broke in a weird spot. I don't really want to just leave one pin to dangle by itself. Okay. All right, and so this should go into the TSOP 40. Even though this adapter is not the TSOP 40 adapter, I'm just using it to hold the pins, to line them up, rather. Yeah, because it's labeled FO16, FO33, or FO32. That's what we want. And uh, let's do the other pins as well. This is kind of a mess, but rather than soldering every single pin, I'm just going to solder the ones that I need to. And I did already mark them off on the silk screen. I don't recall if I did that in the original version. Yeah, I did. Can't see it on this side, really, but you can see the, the white edges out ones. There's no reason I can't solder all of them. It's just easier to... Uh, remove this from from this when there's fewer pins uh, I'll 
I'll save that then. And this last one, even though it's marked off, it is not necessary, but just for alignment, I'm going to add that in there. I'm sorry, I forgot to shut the AC off. I normally do that before I start filming, but it's been, it's been so cold for so long that it, the AC hasn't kicked on. It's very noisy. Uh, this doesn't go together in this order. Remove that battery. All right, and those are all inserted exactly where they need to go. So I can put this back in here. And now I just need to solder all this together. So, bear with me for this soldering montage. For the big bit, I just like to do two corners, or for the big one. That already fell off, of course. I'm just picking it up and making sure that those are flat. I'm going to run my big solder ball across this whole thing. It's not wetting like I thought it would, but it's good enough. I'm gonna fresh solder ball for this side. Nice, big, happy solder ball. I'm 
And as long as you move slow enough, it should wet to every pin and then pull away. If you move too quick, the uh, there won't be enough heat and it'll kind of get stuck in place. There we go. I'm going to transfer this ridiculously large solder ball hanging off my iron. All right. So this side soldered. Of course, it's easier to solder a bunch of pins like that, but for heat sensitive things, it's not the greatest. All right. Now I need to do this one. This one's going to be a wee bit more difficult, but I'll just do the exact same thing. At least for these pins right here. All right, whatever. I'll leave that there. A big thing of solder is going to hold it, everything in place for now. See, if I move too quick, it doesn't actually move and start wetting to the other pins. Got to give it a second to let the heat get absorbed into these. It also helps if you got a little bit of flux, which I haven't been using beyond just the rosin in the flux itself. But so far, that's been good enough. All right. Camera's probably getting ready to cut out pretty soon. If it does, I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the soldering and uh, clean up the leftover sticky flux. The rest of these pins I'm probably going to solder one by one. Instead of just glorping my solder ball between everything. Or not, maybe I will get to finish soldering. Who'd have, who'd have guessed? Alright, but now I am going to take a break. Go pop some batteries in this bed, but well, go, it's right here, I don't have to go anywhere, but <laughs> clean up the flux on this, and uh, yeah, I'll be back in just a moment. Right, so I've got this mostly cleaned up, I think it's time to try it out and see what happens. So I think all should be well, but famous last words. that out of there. We have the switches. I don't think it even matters for this adapter here, but I've already got them both set to what they should be set to, just in case. Let's that up. 
I'm just going to pull this adapter out as is. And both arrows go up. And set to Game Boy Color. Boot it up, see what happens. Flash Run Programmer, 8-bit adapter. Oh, no! Nuts. Now, the chip itself might just not be seated properly. So, as much of, of a bummer as that is, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Now I'm getting something different. I think it just got moved around, unfortunately. Which makes this really annoying to test. I think I might have to pause and come back to this again. There's probably a better way to do this. Um, at the very least, that involves testing with Testing with a TSOP 48 chip instead of a TSOP 40, because those actually fit properly in this adapter. But who knows? I think I might need to play around with this and come back. I'll be back. Right, so I'm thinking it was just that flash chip I was trying to flash. Um, I've got the Super Famicom adapter in here again, but I was just testing it out. I've got an AM29F016 chip in here this time. It flashed okay, it verified okay, so I think we're good. And if we do a blank check, it should fail because it's not blank. And indeed it does. All right, so... Let me pop this adapter off of here. And pop this adapter off of here. And we should be done with this for now. And it's not that it's difficult to get off. I'm just trying to not bend the pins because I'm super good at that. Yeah, just bend some. Oh well. These, uh, this isn't the most modular thing, even though that was my intention. You gotta be careful when popping these. Oh, are you kidding me? What is this nonsense? All right, now I think the problem is with this reader itself. I bet. If I were to reflash this one with the regular firmware so that I could access that menu. Actually, let's double check. I'm sorry, I keep going back and forth all night. Yeah, this just goes straight to Game Boy, so I'd have to reflash this. Um, I think it's with this thing, just because of how loose the connections are up front. How this thing just seems to walk on out, but let me try one more time. Yeah, it was working literally a second ago. See, ta-da. I think I just need to assemble another one of these. Let me, uh, I'm sorry, I ran the blank check before I uh, started filming again and it failed because the chip wasn't blank, which is what it was supposed to do. But let's erase it again. Try it out. 
Race succeeded. Blank check. Please wait. Nice. Nice. All right. See the lights blinking. That's a good sign. Verifying. Flash arm verified. Okay. Okay. And if we do a blank check, that should fail. Excellent. I think that's it. I think I've, um, I think I've solved many problems now. I was, uh, oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I think the problem that I'm encountering now is one of these pins up here, whichever this connects into, it's just not, it's not making good contact. I don't really know how to fix that without swapping out this whole row. And I kind of don't want to do that. Um, I think I'll just slap this on here and then reflash the firmware for both of these because this seems to work fine. that adapter and I'll have to test this one with this adapter but I have to reflash the firmware first and uh, you know what screw it let me go oh shoot this one doesn't actually fit because of where I put the battery connector <sighs> whatever I'll just have to make a third one of these I'm not gonna do that now though I think I'm gonna cut off this video here so yeah I think this works I think the problem is just my pin header connectors. Um, I don't know how many of you following along watching these videos have made one of these, but if one of you has made one of these with just straight pin headers uh, instead of the sockets too, um, that'll probably work a lot better. Another, ooh, shoot, I didn't mean to bend that. Another cool thing about these modular designs is you can literally stack it if you want. I need to lift this up. I can get into my drawer over here. Uh, I don't think I have any handy. Oh, just kidding. There we go. So we have this. This can always be soldered on just like that. So you can combine the modules. And this is the Game Boy module, the latest version. Just solder that, stack them, and then solder the, uh, this part. And there you go. That'll work. That way you can, uh, oh, and this, this will work on either. Oh wait, no, it won't work on this one because of the switches. Oh uh, yeah, it will. Just trim those flush. That'll work there. And that way if you build the thing just with the uh, pin headers, close that so I can bring that back over there, okay. Yeah, that way if you just build this thing with pin headers, it'll be more reliable. You won't be able to swap out new modules as I make them, but you can at least combine two of the, the Game Boy module and one other module. I think I might do that. I think I might build another one. But I don't know. That's enough for tonight. I got it working. I figured out my issue. I'm done with this garbage. And uh, I finally got this thing working. Oh, you know, I just had an idea. I just bend, bend these pin headers. I don't know which it is, so I'll do all of them. And pop that back in here. So even with those bent, that still went in way too easily, I think. But let's see if it works. Nope. 
Something's still off. Let me apply pressure again. Yeah. Something is still off. It might... One of these parts that I assembled is defective, but it's it's a material breakdown. It's not a it's not a wiring issue. So I think that's good. Um, I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna cut off here. Thanks for watching. Um, I know, like two of you probably have been waiting for this thing because this is significantly less clunky to use than this. If this is if the adapter is all you're after. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's a third the size. But um, I think it works. If y'all want to help me test it out, that's wonderful. But I, I can't guarantee that everything is going to work for you because mine barely works as is. I'm going to have to build another one and uh, try it out. But I'm not going to do that on camera. I'll probably just throw something in the description. All right, I got to do a quick addendum because I figured out what the issue was and I believe I fixed it. So I'm going to set this down here, turn it on, and where did my poker go? There it is. Let's go into the flash ROM adapter. You can see it's detecting it just fine. And if we erase it, because last I checked there's a ROM on there. Should erase just fine. There it is. And we should be able to write. I think that first one's just a bad dump. I don't know why I would have dumped it twice otherwise. I just keep forgetting to get rid of it. Anyway, so while that's going, let me discuss what I, what the problem was. So when I was sitting there and saw, why, did, why would I do that? Okay. When I was sitting there and soldering all the pins along the bottom, and this is the Super Famicom adapter, but it's the same thing really. And I was just sitting there dragging that hot solder ball along. I think I was melting the, uh, the header pin connectors on this side of the Game Boy. So, no, excuse me. What I've done to remedy that, I just ran my um, plastic spudger tool through all the pins like this to push them out. And since I've done that, it's a little bit more difficult to insert and remove, but as you can see, verified okay. Link check. Ah, <gasps> not blank. Maybe because we just wrote a ROM to it. As you can see, it's working fine. So try not to solder like I did. I know I shut it off, but it is what it is. Um, but otherwise, I think that saved me a lot of hassle. I am going to go ahead and edit this video and cut out a lot of my struggling with that flash chip. But I'll upload the footage anyway because why not? And I'll, I'll throw... I'm not going to make it a public video. I'm going to leave it unlisted. So I'll throw a link into the description of this one. You can check it out. But otherwise, there's the flash adapter. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night.